Welcome back guys, I hope you're all having a pleasant day. Today I will be showing you a Blitz game played in the Tata Steel India Blitz Chess Tournament. This is really a game of youth versus experience. On the white side we have Ramesh Babu Pragnananda, the prodigy that everyone is talking about. And with the black pieces, the legendary Viswanathan Anand. Prague opens with e4, Anand plays the Sicilian defense, and here Prague goes for the open Sicilian with d4. That is taken, we have knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6, Anand goes for the knight of variation. So here Prague plays an interesting move, a3, just to prevent this knight from being chased away from the c3 square, where it is protecting the e4 pawn. And also, if black goes b5, white can sometimes go b4 and a4 just to undermine black's queenside pawns. So Anand responds to this by going g6, going for some Nidorf dragon hybrid, or sometimes nicknamed the Dragodorf. Prague goes bishop to e2, developing. We have bishop g7, bishop e3, black castles, queen d2, intending the castle long and also supporting in the future bishop to h6. Uh, b5 here from Anand, so we're already expanding on the queen side. White castles, bishop to b7, f3 securing the e4 pawn, knight to b to d7, and h4 from Prague. Now that all his pieces are developed, Prognananda starts his kingside attack. Anand plays the knight into e5, with ideas of knight coming to c4 to win the dark square bishop. But this seems a bit slow, because white is going to play bishop h6 anyway, and knight to c4 can always be met by bishop takes c4, where white is happy to give up this bad bishop. So perhaps better for black was to play to develop the rook to c8. So with some ideas of taking on c3, sacrificing the exchange when the opportunity arises. For example, if white goes bishop to h6, well here black can try to take, then take on c3, which damages white's kingside structure, and then queen to a5, looking at both a3 and c3. So here black definitely has compensation. So white could try to play h5 in this position, and then black can play knight takes h5, rook takes h5, g takes h5. Here maybe black is okay because of this pressure exerted on c3 by the rook and the bishop. And the good news for black here is that for the moment this g file is closed, so he is not losing immediately. But okay, we instead of rook c8, Anand plays knight to e5 in the game. And then bishop h6 from Prague, continuing, continuing on with his attack. Bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, and now Anand goes rook to c8. So this is the moment where things start to get very sharp. So Prague has the option of playing in this position to move h5, just trying to pry open black's king side. So if that is taken, then this rook sacrifice is very obvious and also very strong. So after that is taken, then the knight can land on f5. White is threatening queen to g7, and this is simply winning for white. So here, after h5, black could try to counterattack with queen to a5. But here the move f4 from white is very strong. Just kicking this knight away from the defense of the g6 pawn, also threatening maybe to play f5. So. Here black's best is probably to play rook takes c3, uh, and then white shouldn't take on c3, but instead he should play this, and then take the knight. So after this pawn captures on g6, you can see that this e6 square is now available for white's knight. So here it is interesting to note that black cannot take here, because then queen to h8 would be mate. But after this position, f takes e5, so black can try to complicate things by playing rook takes a3. Uh, white should still be better, but let's say if uh, black plays d takes e5, then knight to e6 is simply crushing, threatening queen to g7 mate. So here f4 is the strongest option for white. 
If in, he instead plays g4, this is a bit slow, black can play rook takes c3, and he should have enough counterplay. So if that is taken, then rook comes to c8. Looking at these weak pawns, black seems to be doing okay. So if in this position, white chooses not to accept the sacrifice, instead he plays king to b1, and then rook takes a3, threatening rook a1 checkmate, so white has to take. Queen takes a3, a very complicated position, but black should have enough counterplay to at least draw this game. So back to the game after rook c8, instead of playing h5, proc plays the move g4, which makes sense trying to push h5 so that this knight cannot recapture on h5. But here Anand now plays rook takes c3, he starts his counterplay on the queen side, b takes c3 and queen to a5. So the natural move here to play is king to b2, trying to defend these pawns. But Prok plays knight to f5, a very thematic sacrifice trying to open up the g-file for his rook. So Anand accepts the sacrifice, he plays queen takes c3, we have rook d to g1 check from Prague. Seems very dangerous uh, disposition for black, but Anand correctly judged that this knight sacrifice wasn't that sound because he has good defensive resources. Here he plays the knight back to g6, f takes g6, f takes g6, and h5 from Prague. So Anand has to react swiftly, otherwise he is going to get mated. But now his pieces come to life here. A very nice move from Anand, he plays bishop takes e4 which threatens mate on c2, also protecting the pawn on g6. So here we have f takes e4, here queen to a1 check, king d2 is forced, but now knight takes e4, the knight joins in the attack, king to e3, queen to c3 check. So here if the knight is taken, then black gets, uh, white gets mated. Rook d8, king to e4, rook d4 check king e5, queen c5, king e6, and then queen to d6 is mate. So taking after queen to c3 check would be a bad idea. So therefore Prague blocks with bishop to d3. But now queen d2 from Anon, he wins the queen on h6. And then here h takes g6 from Prague, opening up a discovery on this rook, also threatening here pawn takes h7. So now it plays queen to f4 check, king to d5, and here a very practical decision by Anand just to play h6, which secures his king side before continuing the attack on white's king. Prague pushes g7, we have rook to c8, and now this looks dreadful for Prague, with his king being so far up the board and very exposed. Queen to e5 checkmate is now threatened. So white goes king to e6, we have d5, rook to g6, desperately trying to start something against this black king, but here Anand's attack is too strong. Rook c6 check, king takes e7. So here Anand was probably in time scramble. Uh, he could have had a force mate after queen to f7 check. King d8, here black can take the rook on g6, but rook c7 is even stronger just threatening to give checkmate on one of these squares. But in the game, uh, Anand plays rook takes g6, then king takes g7, bishop back to d3, queen to e5 check, king d7, and now Anand tries to use this pass h-pawn. He plays h5. Rook g1 check, king f6, rook g6 check, king f7, rook to h6. So now Prague gets his rook behind the pawn, but Anand now creates more problems on the queen side. He plays a5, king c6, b4, so that has to be taken, otherwise black simply takes on a3, and then he gets another passer. So here king back to d7, king g7 attacking the rook, rook to e6, queen d4, king to e8, queen g4, so now black can support the pawn, king to e7, so here uh, instead of king to e7, white can try rook g6 check, 
but this is simply losing because here white uh, black simply runs his pawn down the board so king to e7 black goes h4 bishop e2 attacking the queen queen g5 check king d6 h3 here Pragnananda plays on for a bit rook e7 check king f8 rook e5 queen f6 check king takes d5 and h2 from Anand. There's no stopping uh, this pawn from queening. So here, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda resigned the game. So if he tries rook to h5, getting behind the pawn, simply queen f7 check. And then black simply takes the rook on h5, and then promote the pawn. A really interesting game from both players. Anand may be approaching his 50s, but he is still a very strong player, even at the faster time controls. I hope you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel, thanks for watching and see you soon.